What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Darium's Competitive Pokemon. It's time to play some Pokemon cards. Super excited to be back on my on my TCGO grind. Looks like I'm playing against Metagross here. I'm playing my Alolan Ninetales deck. I think Alolan Ninetales is just such a fun deck to play. It's very skill intensive. I think that there are a lot of little decisions you have to make when piloting the deck just because there's so many different routes you can take with the various Pokemon included in it. There's also a bunch of different win conditions that you can try to obtain while playing the deck. You could go for straight knockouts with your you know, uh, Ninetales GX. You could go for kind of a stall strategy with your Alolan Ninetales with the barrier. You can go for uh, you know the spread damage strategy with your Tapu Koko promos and then try to devolve everything. Looks like I am playing against Metagross, so I'm super excited because I included my Turtonator GX in this deck, and I also have two copies. I think I'm playing two copies of the Alolan Ninetales with the Barrier right now, just to see if that ends up happening if that ends up helping the Metagross matchup. Now, this matchup can be a little sketchy since they do run those Metangs. I don't know why my opponent's playing Fighting Fury Belt in their Metagross deck. That seems a little funny. I mean, I guess you could boost the hit points of the Beldum, and you could boost the hit points of your Tapu Lele, and you could boost the hit points of the Necrozma GX, but I think Choice Band is just explicitly better in this list since you could throw it onto your Metagross GX. I don't know. So we're going to wait and see what my opponent is doing here. They don't go for the turn one Bridget. They're going for the turn one Sycamore, and they don't play it. So very confused as to what my opponent is doing. However, uh, that is fine. We are going to get in here and see what we can make happen. Let's see. Do we go with the turn one Bridget? We could go with the turn one N. Uh, I think the Bridget's fine just to get set up best as possible. I'm going to grab... Remoraid, Coco promo, and looks like we prized our Turtonator. That's a shame. But do we have, and we have one copy of Alolan. Maybe I am only running one copy of the Alolan Ninetales. Okay, let's go for a Coco and the Vulpix and the Remoraid. And we'll do that. Grab that Bridget. And Coco is very good in here. I mean, this hand would be fantastic if I happen to have a double colorless energy in it. I don't, which is a little bit of a shame, but that's okay. Because we're going to be able to go for a turn one beacon here. I'm going to attach to one of my benched Vulpix just in case my active gets knocked out next turn. And then I'm going to beacon. I'm going to grab the Octillery. And I think I want to go with the Barrier Ninetales just because you don't want to get your Ninetales GX out there really early in the game in this matchup. You want to get your Alolan Ninetales this one out. Because your opponent can, you know, just mow through those nine tails very early. Looks like my opponent was sitting on the rare candy Metagross. Maybe this is why they didn't want to play that Professor Sycamore. Not very sure why they're playing the Fighting Fury Belt here. I mean, you can see that that effect is negated right away. Because Fighting Fury Belt only works on basic Pokemon. So maybe they're going to go for a big setup with Geotech uh, or, uh, let's see, with Algorithm GX here you know get an energy onto this metagross gx they got an energy they were sitting on just an energy and a rescue stretcher so that's pretty cool they're going to be able to algorithm here and get the cards they want to set up not you know i guess they had to go for the you know the lele for sycamore on the first turn i'm not sure why he did that preemptively though i'm you know i'm thinking that maybe my opponent should have held the the lele in his hand and just waited to see if I had end or something because there's no real point. Wow, two Metagross GX on the second turn of the game. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Jeez. Wow. So, and my opponent does not want to algorithm GX. Why don't they algorithm GX? Whew, all right. But, you know, I'm not concerned because I have my Luminous Barrier Alola Ninetales here. And I'm going to be a very smart cookie, and I'm not going to evolve into any, you know, GXs and just give my opponent free prizes that way. I'm going to attach this second choice band here. It should either go on the Coco or the Lele. I think that I will attach it. You know, it looks like my, my opponent is definitely not going to be able to knock out this Lele unless they feel blow or their own uh fighting fury belt and replace it with the choice band so i could put it on the lele just because it is a valid option right now but i think i'll put it on the coco instead just because it's a 
you know, kind of a more reasonable move. Could Abyssal Hand for two here. That could help me maybe get a Water Energy into the discard pile. So I think I'll try it. You know, I don't want to draw in any more resources like that. You know, that's not the best, but that's okay. Uh, I'm not going to evolve the Alolan Ninetales GX right now. I play three of them. So, you know, we got plenty left in the deck. I'm just going to Ultra Ball for something that I probably won't end up needing throughout the course of the game, like this Remoraid. And I'm going to Sycamore that away, just so now that we won't draw into it later on. So let's go ahead and Sycamore. Hope we hit a double colorless energy. That'd be great. We did. So that's cool. I can go in with Tapu Koko and Flying Flip. That's a, a valid maneuver. But I think at this point, I almost might as well just go in with the Luminous Barrier Ninetales. And now my opponent is kind of stuck. They don't have any non-EX, non-GX Pokemon right now. So this is a pretty good situation for me to be in. And now I can just Aura Beam for 110 over and over again. My opponent is going to have to try and scrape together a Matang. They should have Matangs in deck just because they did not use any of their Matangs to evolve up into these Metagross. But they don't have a uh, they don't have a Duder out right now. Who is that? The the Beldum. They don't have any Beldums out on their bench, so they're not going to be able to get Matang this turn guaranteed. So they're going to have to endure a few turns of me just like badgering them over and over again with Aura Beam, which is pretty cool. I'm down with that, and uh, we'll. Uh, you know, we'll see kind of where we go from here. If I could spread enough damage onto my opponent's side of the field with Aura Beam, then eventually maybe I could devolve all my opponent's Metagross with that Espeon EX that I run. Unfortunately, I do not have any bench space to put my Espeon right now, but that's okay. See, my opponent does have Field Blower. My opponent is going to have to knock something out in order for me to use the Espeon strategy, but I would like to get more damage on my opponent's side of the field before I go for that anyhow. I do think that maybe two copies of Alola Ninetales with the Luminous Barrier could really help this deck's Metagross matchup. I think I had put the second one in here. I'm not totally sure, though. Let's see. My opponent's Sycamore's the Necrozma and the Tapu Lele. Doesn't feel like benching either of those. I think my opponent may be just thinking that that Necrozma is not going to help him knock out this Alola Ninetales with the Luminous Barrier at all. You know, my opponent could have used that you know, could have maybe used that Tapu Lele to go. I guess they didn't have any energy in hand, so they kind of more or less had to had to Sycamore there. They couldn't get another energy, so they couldn't Lele or anything like that. And let's see, my opponent looks like they might have wanted to go for a Tapu Cure, but for some reason did not do it. So I'm not totally sure what they're thinking there. Let's see, I can power up somebody else. Maybe, I think at this point, I just am better, best off just aura beaming again. I don't want to rate, waste any of my resources. I could Ultra Ball away a couple of waters, you know, but, you know, I guess let's Ultra Ball away a couple of waters. And then we'll just grab a Tapu Lele just in case we want to go grab that Guzma if my opponent manages to knock something out or something like that. You know, other than that, you know, I don't even feel like playing this Aqua Patch or the Double Colorless right now. Because then that's just expending resources that my opponent. My opponent is telling me that I, uh, you know, I have to attach an energy. I don't need to attach an energy though. I'm just going to sit on this hand. There's no real reason to play any of these cards. I'm in the driver's seat right now. What I want and see my opponent is about to bridge it here, so uh, I can expend some resources next turn. My opponent is going to try and get this you know get these evolved up into matang so that my opponent can then accelerate them and you know and then knock out my nine tails so it looks like this turn i do need to be a little reactive to what my opponent's doing i wish i had a guzma in my hand let's see i was i've gone through one guzma already but i am going to go and try and knock out this tapu lele this turn i want to make sure that i definitely get that knockout so let's see what are we trying to do here. I could ask I could also flying flip, and that might end up being a better option because if I flying flip, these beldums will go down to 80, you know, will go down uh, 20 hit points each. And then that makes them easier for me to knock out with a Lola Nine Tails with Aura Beam. Because each of the Met Tanks have 90 hit points. So if I do go in with a flying flip, I think that I like that move the best. So let's Aqua Patch. I'm going to throw one of these onto my Vulpix here, the one without the Float Stone, just so that I can use Choice Band if I want to. Could Abyssal Hand for one, but I'm just going to Sycamore because I don't want to 
draw into like a resource that I can't play or something like that. Um, and then let's see, I do got a rescue stretcher here. That's good. I got my 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 Espeon EX, which is ready to go. And I think I am just gonna retreat into that Tapu Koko here. And I'm just gonna start going for, yeah, we're gonna retreat the water energy because I can aqua patch it back. And we're just gonna start going for flying flip. So now in order for my opponent to knock out this nine tails, they're going to have to get a Matang and a Guzma, which is like a little annoying for them to have to pull out. So I think I, I, I'm guessing that my Alolo nine tails is more or less safe right now. If my opponent does go for a Tapu Cure, I'm fine with that because then I just get another turn of flying flip damage. So, you know, I, I'm just gonna stay up here and use my Tapu Coco. And you can see how Tapu Coco is just like slowing down the pace of the game. And that's why I like this card so much in this deck because it's just a very reactive card. I can force my opponent into weird situations because while they're deciding what to do with my board position, I don't have a lot of EXs or GXs here for my opponent to knock out. And that's intentional because they've got a bunch of Metagross out. I mean, my opponent got two Metagross GX out on the second turn of the game, but you can see that I have forced them to not take the lead. And that's because of just how I've been playing, who I've been promoting. I haven't been feeding my opponent Alolan Ninetales GX. In fact, I have these Vulpix on the bench that I'm intentionally not going to evolve into Alolan Ninetales GX unless I plan on trying to attack with Alolan Ninetales GX. Then I will evolve and probably attack in the same turn. Because my opponent's not going to Guzma up these Vulpix and knock them out. If anything, the only kind of... Uh, the only kind of juicy thing on my bench is this Tapu Lele, but if my opponent comes in with a Metagross and knocks out Tapu Lele, then I'm going to be able to return with a good amount of damage to my, my opponent's Metagross, and they more or less probably know that. So I did not draw into a Guzma right now. I'm just going to continue to Flying Flip because that just that's just the play right now. I'm, I could do... Uh, I could do 50 to the Lele, but I think I want to save that for next turn so that maybe I can surprise knock out my opponent's Lele with that choice ban. Just going to sit here like this. Uh, I could end, but, you know, I kind of like having uh, the... I like having all this energy in my hand. I like having the choice ban. No real reason to end yet. I'm just going to play reactively, save my resources. That's kind of the name of the game. I'm not trying... I definitely don't want to outburn my opponent. Like, I don't want to burn through my resources faster than my opponent does. Ninetales tends to play very long, drawn-out games. So you want to save all your... Re like, I don't want to burn an N right now when my opponent still has six prizes. I want to be using N when my opponent has maybe one or two prizes left. That's when I'm really going to want to use my N. There's no... You, just because you have a supporter card in your hand doesn't mean you necessarily have to play it. Now, maybe my opponent has... I don't really know what they're trying to do. Maybe my opponent... Okay, they're ending. Why did they retreat before the end? You definitely... Usually, you don't want to do that unless, like, my opponent would have been trying to play a card that would have used the energy that they used to retreat before the end, but not really sure what my opponent's trying to do here. Why are they coming up with this Metang to try and attack my Tapu Koko? That seems bad because... Oh, and now they're going to escape rope. Okay, and I will promote this Vulpix with the uh, with the Floatstone on it. Maybe my opponent will then get a knockout finally. They'll use Geotech systems and knock. Yep, here we go. So maybe they are finally going to take a knockout here on this Vulpix, which is cool. You know, a better a Vulpix here than a Ninetales GX. So that's fine. Finally, they're going to free up some bench space for me. Uh, that, see they're playing fighting fury belts i really think that that's kind of a poor choice but if i've used my one i haven't used my field blower yet so that's good so i'll be able to remove that from the tapu lele make it a little easier to knock out as you can see here my opponent's pokemon are very close to being knocked out with one espion so i'm just going to go ahead and flying flip again i could use the choice band here to flying flip for a little more damage that could be fine I want to kind of save this Ultra Ball here just so that I could grab the Espeon next turn. Or maybe I want to Ultra Ball for a second Coco. I think I'm probably going to do that. I'm going to Ultra Ball, grab a second Coco. I'm going to discard this Float Stone and the Ace Rolla. Since my opponent's probably going to be one shotting everything in my deck, you know, from here on out, I want to just have a, I want to have a free retreater on my bench. And the reason I'm putting the free retreater there 
is just so that I have the option to kind of pivot to whatever I want next turn. I could Guzma up something that my opponent does not want to be in the active, you know, but I don't really think that there's a, let's see, I don't really think there's too much of a point in that. My opponent's got two energy in the discard pile, so they can accelerate those to whoever. I think I could end, I probably want to end just so that maybe I have the option to get the Espeon a little easier next turn. Just gonna attach that choice band. See, and now I have the Espeon. So now I'm just gonna wait because this is this is the hand I want. I did not want to bench the Espeon preemptively because then my opponent could Guzma it up and knock it out. So this is why I set up the second Tapu Koko so my opponent can knock out the active Tapu Koko. Then I can promote this and retreat into the Espeon and devolve and knock out like a bunch of Pokemon all in one turn. So long as my opponent does not play any max potions. So we're gonna see how that goes here. And you can just see how much damage Tapu Koko promo is doing. I've made this game just extremely awkward for my opponent here. And a lot of players aren't going to know, you know, what the best routes to take against a deck like Alolan Ninetales are. That being said, a lot of players may not know the best routes to take when piloting Alolan Ninetales either. It just is this very slow deck. You can see I'm not going in with my Ninetales GX. I'm not going in with Tapu Lele. I'm not even trying to deal like... You know a ridiculous amount of damage right now see my opponent is going to promote this necrozma and probably try to take a knockout on my tapu coco with the necrozma just because it has no damage on it so they're trying to keep their pokemon here on the bench safe but uh maybe my opponent skyla's for a max potion here that probably is the best play skyla for the guzma oh my opponent's about to go down and they don't even know it so they're gonna prismatic burst I wonder if my opponent's playing Max Potion. Max Potion is a really good card in Metagross. Highly suggest playing it. I mean, it's, that's the card that really makes this matchup tough to win. So you can see now I have my Espeon. My opponent, after I devolve all these Pokemon, is going to have no way to respond. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach this here. And I'll, let's see, no point in putting that Choice Band down. Yep, so I am just going to go ahead and retreat. And I'm going to Miraculous Shine here. I could keep the Guzma. That's fine. Just going to take, what, three, four prizes all in one turn. <laughs> That's crazy. So here's Espiani X doing its thing. Four Beldums all in the discard pile. That's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. And, you know, I don't really see my opponent having any out to be able to win this game after here. My board position is, you know, just fine. I have the Barrier Ninetales here on the bench. And there's the second Barrier. I knew I was playing two Barrier Ninetales. So uh, there's nothing my opponent could do about it. Their board position is a Lele and an Necrozma. I'd be very surprised if they don't scoop at this point. You know, if they try to tough this one out, it's probably more or less for a lost cause. And this matchup gets a lot more difficult if your opponent is able to max potion off those those Metagross earlier in the game. If my opponent had been playing max potion to heal their Metagross, you know, or if they'd use Tapu Cure. I'm not exactly sure why my opponent didn't Tapu Cure easy earlier. I mean, that would have made things difficult for me as well. Instead, they were just passing and kind of served it up to me. So uh, there you go. Alolan Ninetales GX doing its thing. Thank you all for watching the video. Let me know what you think of Ninetales GX in the comments below. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.